Good morning. Welcome to CJ TV. Uh, today we'll be dealing with normal distribution. Remember to share, subscribe, and um, like this channel for more updates. Um, today we will look at normal distribution as I said earlier. Uh, when we talk about normal distribution, normal distribution simply means that there is a matter of all distribution where any distribution can be located in the normal distribution. Now, normal distribution is the matter of all distribution. We have a lot of distribution like the T distribution, the L distribution, but all these distributions are under the normal distribution. There are certain features of normal distribution that we are going to look at. Before that, I will draw a normal distribution curve. And through the normal distribution curve, we'll be able to identify all the features of normal distribution. Now, when we talk of normal distribution, as you can see from the box, it's a bell-shaped curve. Okay? So one of the features of normal distribution is that it is a bell-shaped curve. Okay? Now, you realize that the normal distribution this K does not touch the horizontal line. As you can see, there is a space here, there is a space here. The K doesn't touch this line, and it means that it is asymptotic. That is, the K is not touching the horizontal line. Okay. Now, you realize that another feature of it is that all this area under the K, okay, all the area under the K is equal to 1. Are we good? Now, there is a straight line dividing the curve into two equal parts. We call it the line of symmetry. So we are saying that a normal distribution curve is symmetrical, meaning that uh, the curve is being split into two equal parts. Meaning that this part is equivalent to this part, meaning they are the same. Okay. Now, another feature of the normal distribution curve is that the mean for a normal distribution curve, when the curve is standardized into normal standard curve, the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is one. Therefore, the variance will be one. Now, you realize again that from this same curve, you realize that this line, which is the horizontal axis, okay, is being measured in standard deviation. Now, this curve has been able to deduce all the features of the normal distribution. So let's look at one again. First, we said one of the first, one of the features is the curve itself is a bell shaped curve. It's a bell shaped curve. The curve does not touch the horizontal axis, telling us that the curve is asymptotic, meaning it doesn't touch the horizontal axis. Another feature is that the area under the curve is equal to one. Now, if this curve is being divided into two equal parts which is the line of symmetry, meaning that the normal distribution curve is symmetrical in nature. Therefore, since the area is equal to 1, half of the curve will be 0.5 and half of the curve will be 0.5. How do we have to say? Okay. Now, the basic assumption for normal distribution is the basic application. Now, we will look at the basic application, but the most important thing that I'm interested in is the probability. The probability. Now, when we say the basic application here, yeah, we will talk about probability, we talk about percentage, and we talk about number of students or number of energy that has been done. But before that, we will look at some examples. But as I said earlier, my basic focus is on the probability. Because the moment you are given any question, the first thing you will deal with is to find the probability before you apply either percentage or you are asked to find the number of students who pass that particular examination. Now, you realize that since you are going to look at the probability, now we are going to focus on this. Remember we said or we spoke about this formula during um, Z score, that Z is equal to X minus X bar over standard deviation, where this is the observed mean and this is the uh, this is the observed score. Sorry, this is the observed score and this is the class mean and this is the standard deviation. 
English. Okay. Now this formula, we are going to use it, or we are going to apply this formula in whatever we are going to do today. Let's take our first example. Let's say uh, the level 200 who wrote educational statistics script, okay, had a mean, had a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 5. Okay, and uh, what is the probability of obtaining a score greater than, let's say, 50? Is that probably of obtaining a score greater than what? So now, the first thing we need to ask is uh, the level 200 rural educational statistics quiz had a mean of 40 with a standard deviation of 5. What is the probability of obtaining a score greater than 50? Now, this time around, okay, I've told you we we'll always go by this formula. So, probability of obtaining a score greater than 50 is equal to x minus x bar over standard deviation. Are we okay with that? Now, you realize that when we input our figures into the formula, we are going to have 50 minus 40 over 5. This will end up giving us 10 over 5, which will end up giving us 2. Okay. So the probability of obtaining greater than 50 is equal to 2. But this 2, we have to read from the distribution table. Okay. Now, we are going to have this to be equivalent to 0.4772 when you read. Now, when you read, let's go to our normal distribution curve. Let's try and sketch our normal distribution curve. Let's sketch a normal distribution curve. Okay, now let's indicate our line of symmetry. Let's indicate our zero. The zero is the mean, but in the question, the mean was what? 40. Is that okay? Now, looking at the number line, where are you going to place a score of 50? When this is 40, you see 50 is about 40. 50 can come somewhere here. Is that okay? Now, when we calculated for the C, we had what? 2. Now, we are asking of probability of obtaining a score greater than 50. Looking at the direction of where that uh, score 50, greater aspect or greater than will be at this direction. Because from this region or from this section green, indicate a greater than is that okay? So we are interested in this shaded portion. Are we good? This shaded portion is what we are interested in. But you know that from here to here is what? 0.25. Now after calculating and reading, we had 0.4. 772. How do we get this portion? Now, to get this portion, we are going to deduct this from the 0 0.15. Okay. So we are saying that the probability of obtaining a score greater than 50 is equal to 0 0.5. So the probability of obtaining a score greater than 50 is equal to 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4. 772. This will end up giving us 0.1587 if I'm correct. No, no, no. This will give us 0 0.0228 rather. 0 0.0228. I think so, yes. So if this is the probability after subtracting, okay, you realize that. This probability becomes the final answer because the probability of students obtaining greater than 50 is 0 0.0228. But if they should ask you of students who obtain a score greater than 50, then you would have multiplied this by 100 because the question was on percentage. If they should ask you, about what? About how many students obtain a score greater than uh, greater than 50? They would have multiplied this by the number of students in the question. When you are asked that about how many students obtain a score greater than 50? Now I'm only going to change one or two things. 
we are going to change the mean to 60. This is the same question. And let's see how we are going to solve it. Okay. And you're going to maintain the score to 50. So this time around, our mean will be what? 60. Our mean is 60 this time around. And I'm going to say that how many students have the score below 50? So you are changing this to below 50. Okay. Change it to below 50. Now, when we saw this is 50, then this becomes what? 60. Is that, this is that 60. So you still maintain negative, so you get negative 2. Now, even if you get negative 2, you still give the positive aspect and you get 0 0.477. Okay, but don't forget, you are dealing with less than now. You are dealing with less than now. So now, this is where it's going to change. Here we totally change because we are interested in less than that. So when you draw the curve, when you draw your normal distribution curve, your line of symmetry is here, zero, then you realize that your mean is what? 60. Okay, so what are we going to take the score 50? 50 will be here, have you seen? And now we are interested in less than, less than 50, less than 50. This one too, we are going to what? Subtract. Because from year to year, it's 0 0.5. Now after reading, we have 0.772, okay? So here we are going to subtract. So here to subtract. So here to, we are going to subtract because, because, you see, the mean is now 60. And now, the score is 50. The score is 50. And we are interested in the probability of obtaining below 50. So this is our below section. Okay. And this is the 0 0.75. So when you get this, for you to be able to get this section, you must subtract this from 0 0.5 to get it. So when you subtract, you get the 0 0.0228. But always remember, if the question asks of percentage, then you multiply the 0 0.0228 by 100 percent. If they ask you about how many students pass, then you multiply that by the number of students who wrote the examination. That is the other way too. Now this time around too, we have gone back to our 40. Okay. Now the mean is now 40. We think the same uh, score for each of the variables. So we change that to what? 40. And here will be positive. Here will be, be positive 10. So here will be positive. And here will be positive. Okay. But we are still interested in the less than what? 50. We are still interested in the less than 50. So let's get our distribution. After the calculation, we still have the same response, the same answer. So let's draw our distribution to see how it goes. So this is our normal distribution here. This is our zero. In the question, our mean is 40. So you realize that the mean is 40, but we place the score 50 above 40 because 50 is greater than 40. Now after calculating, we have two. After reading the two, we have 0 0.4772. Now we are interested in the probability of scoring below 50. Now you see, these are 50. So our below will be this section, the whole of this. So this time around, the whole of this shaded portion is the region in which we are interested in because we are looking at the probability of obtaining the score below 50. Now you know that from here to here, 0.5 okay from here to here is 0.5 now the calculating we have 0.4772 so for us to find the probability we are going to add the 0.5 to the 0.4772 that will end up giving us 0.9772 are you okay with that so this is the probability but in case you are asked to find the percentage so in order to find the probability, after adding, and you are asked to find the percentage, we multiply this by If you are asked to find about how many students pass, we multiply this by the number of students in the question. This gives us 0.9772.
the end of the normal distribution. God willing, we meet next time for my class. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks to Cynthia, Bart, Zach, Molena, Ethia, Kate, and everybody that can be in my